Hi, this is your video for the first half of the trig unit, the review for that quiz. Um, notice the note at the top of the page, 1 through 13. When you do all of these, you need to be able to do these using your, using your unit circle only. No calculator. So do not use a calculator on these. There will be a separate part of the quiz where you are not allowed to use a calculator. So um, I'm just going to pick a few of these. We're not going to do every problem, but just a couple um, from each section or one from each section, depending. So I'm going to start with number four. It says find the secant of negative 4 pi over 3. So I need to find negative 4 pi over 3 first. So if I look at my unit circle, 4 pi over 3 is right here. But again, negative means we're moving the opposite direction. So negative 4 pi over 3, here's negative 3 pi over 3. This 2 thirds, 2 pi over 3, is the same as negative 4 pi over 3. So I'm going to copy down my ordered pair here. It's negative 1 half, 3 halves. Um, and that is what I'm going to use to start. So negative 1 half radical 3 over 2. So negative 1 half radical 3 over 2 is the <clears throat> um, ordered pair. So now to find the secant, secant is the reciprocal of sine, or cosine rather, sorry. Reciprocal of cosine. So take the cosine value, which is negative 1 half, and reciprocal it. So instead of negative 1 half, it's going to be negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So that is how I came up with that answer. Now let's look at 6, cosecant of negative 120. Again, taking a look over here, negative 120 would be here, right here, at positive 240, because this is negative 90, and 30 more is negative 120. So its ordered pair is negative 1 half negative radical 3 over 2. So negative 1 half negative radical 3 over 2 because negative 120 is the same as positive 240. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I take the sine and I reciprocal it. So negative 2 over radical 3. Now, can't leave it like that. Simplest radical form means I need to rationalize. So my final answer is going to be negative 2 radical 3 over 3. Let's do two more. How about the cotangent of pi? So pi is right here. Cotangent. I'm going to get to that in a second, but here's my ordered pair, because I always try to just copy that down so I can see which angle I'm talking about. So pi is negative 1, 0. Cotangent is cosine divided by sine. So the cosine is the x, the sine is the y. When I go to simplify, you cannot divide by 0. So this one is going to be undefined. All right, last one for this section. I think we've gotten the picture pretty well. I'm going to do number 9, the cotangent of 11 pi over 6. So first, go to your unit circle. Find 11 pi over 6. That's an easy one because it's right there. It's not negative or anything. So radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half is the ordered pair. So radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So cotangent, again, just like we did in 8, is going to be the cos cosine value or divided by the sine value. So cosine value here is negative radical 3 over 2, or actually it's positive there. And we divide by the sine value, so divided by negative 1 half. Now, we did a lot in Unit 5 with dividing big rational expressions. Remember that you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So it's times negative 2 over 1. So the 2's are going to cancel, 
and I've got negative radical 3 remaining. All right, so again, make sure you can do all of those using only the unit circle, no calculator. Next, evaluate the expression using the unit circle. Give your answer in both degrees and radians. Remember to list all answers. So in many cases, there's more than one, so make sure you list all of them. So uh, let's see. Let's start with number 10 inverse cosine of negative radical 3 over 2. So again, when we're using the inverses, we're looking for the angles. So I'm saying, where is there a cosine value of negative radical 3 over 2? And so as I look around, I should see two of them. I see one here at 150, and then I see another one here at 210. So they both have the correct cosine value. So I can list those 150 degrees, 210 degrees. Now I also need to list their radian equivalents, which are on your unit circle as well. So that's 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Now let's look at one that's maybe a little bit more difficult. Number 13, it wants the tangent to be negative radical 3. Well, in order for the tangent to be negative radical 3, that means that I had to have a radical 3 end up in the numerator when I took sine divided by cosine. So I look at my unit circle and I know that it's not going to be a 45 because 45 gives me 2's and radical 2's. It doesn't give me any radical 3's. So just for the sake of simplicity for a second, I'm just going to look in quadrant 1. If I am doing the sine divided by the cosine, and let's say I look at 30, 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2, I would have to flip this. So the radical 3 would be in the denominator. I want it to be in the numerator because it doesn't look like a rationalized answer. It's not radical 3 over 3. It's just a plain radical 3. So I'm going to look to the 60. If I do sine divided by cosine here, I flip the 1 half and the 2's cancel and I just get radical 3. So I know it's going to be a 60 degree reference angle that is going to give me the tangent value of negative radical 3. In order to have a negative tangent value, you have to have the sine and cosine be opposites. And you can use your all scholars take calculus if you want to find it. We know that it's going to be, and I'm going to write this down, we know that it's going to be a 60 degree reference angle. And the tangent is negative, if I look at all scholars take calculus, the tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So go back to the unit circle, find the 60 degree angle in both of those, and you can check your work if you want. But 120 is a 60 degree angle in quadrant 2, and 30, or 300 rather, is the 60 degree angle in quadrant 4. So 120 degrees and 300 degrees are our answers there. So 120 degrees, 300 degrees, and then don't forget to list their equivalents, 2 pi over 3 here, and 5 pi over 3 here. All right, 14, it's the only one of its kind, so I guess we'll have to do it. First thing that you need to do is find the third side. So this is my missing side. I need to do 1 squared plus missing side squared, so we'll call it x, equals hypotenuse squared. So 1 plus x squared equals 9. Subtract the 1 on both sides. x squared equals 8. I always get people who put 8 here. First of all, that doesn't make sense. The hypotenuse has to be the longest side. Don't forget to take the square root. Secondly, do not forget that it needs to be in simplest radical form. Radical 8 breaks down. If you factor tree it, here's a pair of 2's. It's 2 radical 2. So once you've found that third side, now I just need to set up my sine, cosine, so on and so forth. So sine of theta opposite over the hypotenuse is one-third. 
cosine of theta adjacent, which is 2 radical 2, over hypotenuse, which is 3, and tangent, which is opposite, over adjacent. Now this one, tangent, I need to simplify. It needs rationalized, so multiply by radical 2 on top and bottom. I get radical 2 on the top. On the bottom, be careful. It already had the 2 in front, and these 2 give you another 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So it's radical 2 over 4. All right, now, don't forget the other trig functions, the reciprocal ones. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine, so 3 over 1, which is 3. Secant, you're going to reciprocal your cosine, so 3 over 2 radical 2. Again, you need to rationalize here. Gives me 3 radical 2 over 4. Cotangent, I talked about this in class, but I'll say it again. It's easier to reciprocal the work than the answer for tangent. If you reciprocal the final simplified answer of tangent, then you would have to rationalize. If you reciprocal the original here, 2 radical 2 over 1, you've got it in one step, just 2 radical 2. All right, 15 and 16 are using your special right triangle formulas. These you need to know, you're not given them, so make sure that you can write all of your formulas. So, in a 30-60-90, the hypotenuse is the short leg times 2, the long leg is the short leg times radical 3. So, what I'm given here happens to be the short leg. So, when I'm given the short leg, that makes it rather easy. The hypotenuse is x, so x equals short leg, which is 5, times 2, so x is 10. y over here is my short leg, or my long leg rather. Long leg equals the short leg times radical 3. That does not simplify, so 5 radical 3 is the best I can do. On 16, it's a 45, 45, 90. Your formula is hypotenuse equals leg radical 2. The leg is 7, which because this is isosceles means the other leg is 7. So the hypotenuse, which is y, is 7 times radical 2. And again, that does not simplify. So that is all we can do. 17, 18, 19 are all using your calculator. Make sure it's in the right mode. This one needs degree mode. So remember, there's no cosecant button. You have to do 1 divided by the sine of 42. Do not do second cosine or something like that. Those are inverse trig functions. That's totally different. You're doing 1 divided by the sine of 42 to come up with your answer. It says round to four decimal places, so 1.4945. Solve triangle ABC using the diagram and the given information. So, solve means find everything that's missing. So, I listed the things that you're going to need to find. So, angle B, that's the easiest one. So, just do 90 minus 14, and that gives you angle B, which is 76 degrees. Side B, if I fill in what I was given, which is that A is 14, and side A is 6. Remember that I suggested that when you show your work for this that you always use the givens. So when I want to find B, I want to do it with the 14 degrees and the 6 and nothing else. So in relationship to the 14, the 6 is the opposite side, the B is the adjacent. So I'm going to set up a tangent ratio. Tangent of 14 equals opposite over adjacent. When the variable's on the bottom, you switch these. So b equals 6 divided by the tangent of 14. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. But when you do that, 6 divided by the tangent of 14, you should, and it says round to two decimal places here, come up with 24.06. Then I need to solve for C. Again, use only the given. So 
C is the hypotenuse. 6 is still the opposite. So opposite and the hypotenuse means sine. So sine of 14 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that means C equals 6 divided by the sine of 14, which should give you 24.80. All right, sketching the angles. So this should be really easy by now because you've had to do it a lot mentally with the unit circle. Negative 140 is 40 degrees short of negative 180. So going in the negative direction, here is negative 140. The radians, some people still struggling with these. 5 goes into 12 two times with 2 left over. So this is 2 and 2 fifths pi. It's positive, so we travel counterclockwise. One full rotation is 2 pi. 2 fifths pi is just a little less than another half, because 2.5 would be half. So it's a little less than getting to the half pi mark. And that is our sketch there. All right, next, coterminal angles. So I'm going to go ahead and look at 24, which is the same angle as what you had in number 22. So we should now know where the angle is located, which is your first step here with coterminal angles. If you don't know where it is, you need to sketch it so you know where it is. So we know that this is 2 and 2 fifths, and we know where it lands. So if I rewrite the 2 and 2 fifths pi, if we know where it lands, so I'm going to draw the original angle, just like I did up above. There's my original angle. Now, the coterminals, this is where I kind of color code them. Positive coterminal means I'm going to get to the same line, going the same direction, but a different amount of loops. So instead of going around once and then up, I'm just going to go straight up, and that's it. Now you should know how much that is because the full original was 2 and 2 fifths pi. 2 pi is the full rotation, so this extra was just 2 fifths pi. So 2 pi over 5 would be a positive coterminal angle. A negative coterminal angle just means, again, get to the same line. They have to have the same terminal side, but go in the negative direction. So I start here at 0 and I go around clockwise. Now, this one, you can do this several ways. Um, you can either say that this is pi, and then if this was 2 fifths, that means this much has to be 3 fifths pi, and this is pi. So you could do pi plus 3 fifths, so 1 and 3 fifths pi, and then convert it to improper notation. So big times the bottom plus the top. So 1 times 5 is 5 plus 3 is 8. So you can either do negative 8 pi over 5, because again, remember, this is the negative direction. Or the other way that you could do this, other than taking pi plus the 3 fifths, is you could also do 2 pi take away the red, which was 3 pi over 5. So either way, you're going to get the same answer, whether you take pi plus 3 fifths or whether you do 2 pi minus, um, oops, and I wrote the wrong thing, 2 pi minus 2 pi over 5, so 2 pi minus 2 fifths. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, so two different ways to look at it. 25 and 26 are just your conversions. If we want to convert from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi over 180. If we want to do the opposite, from radians to degrees, we multiply by 180 over pi. So over here, when I multiply, um, I like to cross-reduce if possible. Um, here the zeros are definitely going to cancel out, so that's what I would do first, negative 34 pi over 18. 
and then look to see if those reduce, which they do. They're both even, which means they're both divisible by 2. So if I divide those both by 2, I get negative 17 pi over 9. And then that doesn't reduce further because 17 is prime. So negative 17 pi over 9 would be the radian equivalent. Over here, the pi's cross cancel each other. I can also cross reduce the 3 with the 180 because 180 divided by 3 is 60. So now top times top, 8 times 60 is 480. That's not a good looking for, 480. And then on the bottom, this canceled, so 1 times 1 is just 1. So that's your answer, 480 degrees. 27 and 28, this is the one where I did the extra problem on the board, um, just because people tend to have a few issues with this one. So first, let's look at 28. It tells us that the cosine of theta is negative 0.82. So the first thing you should do, you always start by doing the inverse trig. So in this case, it'd be inverse cosine. So inverse cosine of negative 0 0.82. Again, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, because if it's in the wrong mode, you're going to be wondering why your answer doesn't make any sense. So if we're in degree mode and we press in our inverse cosine of negative 0.82, we should get 145.08. It says two decimal places here, so that's what we use. Now, second step. You got to check. Does this meet the qualification? No, it doesn't. So that means the next thing in line is to find the reference angle. So 145 is like right here. So again, reference angle is to the x-axis. So the difference between 180 and 145.08 is going to be my reference angle. So take 180 and subtract, you get 34.915. So we'll make that 34.92 when we round to two decimal places. Now, 34.92 is not between 180 and 270 either. So that means our final step is to Find angle in the given quadrant. So in this case, between 180 and 270 is quadrant 3. So I want the 34.92 degree angle in quadrant 3. So the way that I would find its measure is to take 180 and add 34.92. which gives you 214.92. And that's your answer. All right, 29. A builder needs to construct a wheelchair ramp 24 feet long that rises to a height of 5 feet above ground level. So wheelchair ramp, there's the ramp. It needs to rise 5 feet above ground level. So if we make this the ground, that's supposed to be grass. It certainly does not look like it, but here's your ground. Here's five feet. It says the wheelchair ramp needs to be 24 feet long. We know that would be a right angle. Approximate the angle of elevation to the ramp of the nearest degree. So angle of elevation is angles that are going up like this. So once you have the picture, all you need to do is set up your trig function. The 5 is opposite, the 24 is hypotenuse, so that's sine. So sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. When I'm looking for theta, that means I'm going to use my inverse function. So inverse sine of 5 over 24, and that's going to equal theta, which when you punch it in, hopefully, you come up with 12.
All right. Um, one thing that I think I didn't point out that I want to just highlight real quick before I end this here is back here on the 30, 60, 90 triangles, I wanted to point out that you have to know these formulas. Sometimes when people study this, they memorize, oh, I multiply it by 2 to get this, and I multiply it by radical 3 to get this. You're not always given the short leg. You have to know the formulas and be able to plug the information that you're given into the right place and solve. So if you need to go back and look at your classworks to see ones where you were given something else, because I just picked one of each, then maybe you need to do that. But again, it would be a totally different problem. Let me just make one up here. If I gave you this instead, that's totally different because that's the hypotenuse. So if hypotenuse equals x radical 2, then suddenly you're dividing by the radical and rationalizing. So I just wanted to point out that you need to know the formulas and be able to plug in and solve regardless of which piece you're given. So you, you could be giving it any three. You could be given the hypotenuse, you could be given the long leg, you could be given the short leg. So make sure you know how to do all of those things. Study, study. Happy trails.